Alright guys, so, you want to learn Frost, and you only got a couple of minutes to do that. It's going to be difficult. Let me shut up this music, right? Frost is not a very good beginner character. If you're a beginner, I would probably recommend you just go to a different character. But if you're hell-bent on learning Frost, and you're a beginner player, and you don't give a shit about any of that stuff, you've come to the right place. We're going to break Frost down. we got about 10 minutes to do it. Uh, let's see if we can explain Frost in 10 minutes, uh, cause I'm not very confident that I can, but we've got it scripted out and we're going to go for it. And we're going to see if we can do it. All right. So why would you want to pick this character? Uh, the reason why anybody would want to pick Frost is because she has very, very strong utility. Like Frost doesn't have any weaknesses. She also doesn't have any strengths. She doesn't have any weaknesses. So if you're the type of player who wants to be Batman, and you want to have a utility belt with a specific tool for every single situation. You will never be caught unprepared. Frost is the character for you. She has the tools to fight at any range against any character, but she requires a very deep understanding of fighting game fundamentals for you to make her work. So if you're up to that challenge, Frost is the character for you. All right. So what is Frost's archetype? Frost is the jack-of-all-trades character. Think of her as like Ryu from Street Fighter. He can do everything. He's not the best zoner, but he can zone. He's not the best rush down, but he can rush down, right? The only thing is Frost is a little bit more complicated than Ryu. Uh, she has one of the bigger command lists in the game, and a lot of her moves are very, very niche moves for very, very specific situations. But I'm going to go over some of the core moves that you want to at least focus on starting up. And starting up, we're going to look at the build. So this is a build submitted to me by a community member who's put in a lot of time on frost i've also put in a lot of time on frost either way shout outs to mr crosby right so we have the ice auger we have the air ice quake and we have the microburst so let's look at these right ice auger is this drill it's a little mid-range projectile uh if you hit it at max range you can get a crushing blow um i think it has to be a max range counter hit or something like that it's not a crushing blow, you're gonna see all that often. The most important thing about it is that you can amplify it, right? And get a combo, right? So you can do a simple combo like that, right? You can make sure to not fuck up your combo, right? Easy 25-ish percent. Um, it is also safe. So one of the reasons why this is a very strongly recommended move for any Frost player is because you can just throw it out there and if they block, you can amplify it and be safe. Now, not amplifying it, it is unsafe. You will die, okay? It is a high. They can duck it. It's negative enough, all of that. But if you amplify it, it's, I believe, minus six, which is pretty safe, right? It's very, very hard to punish it. So if you are new to fighting games, you can throw this move out at the end of any string. And as long as you have the meter to amplify it, there's not much they can do about it. Uh, the other move is going to be the air dive kick, right? So one of the things Frost has going for her is that she has like really, really bad ground mobility. Like that's her wave dash, but her air mobility is godlike. Like look at this flip, right? And to be able to just throw that out at any time is a good thing, right? If they're throwing, it's on topic with Frost. If they're doing a thing, I have a counter for it. If they're throwing projectiles, I can dive over them, right? If they're running away, I can chase them down. This move does have a couple of interesting properties. If you do it from max range, it's a low and it's safe. If you do it up close, it's a mid and it is not safe. So make sure you uh, use this move at the proper range, right? You want it to where she hits their feet as a low. That way you can get in for free and they can't punish you. Uh, if you do it too close, you will die if they block it. So be careful with that. The other one is going to be Microburst. And it is a combo starter or combo extender that freezes them in place. Um, and it gives you basically uh, guaranteed unbreakable damage if you hit them on the ground. So like oftentimes it'll be something like this, right? And then you can do this, right? So again, I'm not telling you to spend two bars for 27% damage, but you do have the option to convert combos to keep them grounded and unbreakable. And a lot of the combos you can get off of Microburst um, are big damage. So she has this string that a lot of people like to look at, and that string is like death on block. Don't even bother doing it. But if I do a Microburst, right, I can back up. I can do this and then go for you know whatever damage, right? 
it, it allows you to use some of her better strings safely because uh, you can easily convert it into a combo. So that's kind of the beginner build that we have with Frost. There are some other special moves I'd like to take note of, right? So she's got this kind of shooty thing. That's her zoning tool, right? If you want a projectile that goes full screen to keep them out at any time you want to do that, you have that. Um, she also has this helicopter thing. The helicopter is quite safe on block. Uh, what is it? Minus... Minus four, minus seven on Amplify. So you could just throw this out, right? You could do down one special move, which is super cheap in this game, and just throw it out. You could throw it out at the end of combos. There's no reason to just not do that move a lot of the times. Like, it's pretty brain-dead move. Uh, it's very, very good. And uh, the other special move that I wanted to take note, that I wanted you to pay attention to, is going to be this one, the Cyberhead, right? Frost doesn't have many launchers that launch you very high in the air, but when she does get corner combos, this is her breakaway. Or, wait, which, which one was it? Down back three. Down back three. That's her anti-breakaway. You can get combos if they break away out of your com um, out of your launchers. Um, so it is a notable move. It's also pretty decent anti-air, and she can get some decent anti-air combos off of it. Um, but that's like the, the, the variation build and special moves that I want you to take note of. Now we're going to go into her important moves. And this is where things are going to get a little bit, uh, this is probably be, this is where most of the time is going to be spent on the video. She has a lot of moves that are very, very important. Um, we spent a lot of time discussing and debating what moves to include in this guide, and there's a lot of them. Uh, so starting out, the first, first most important move is going to be back one. She has a string, back one, two, one, right? Little, uh, nice three-hitting string. Back one, two can be special canceled, so you can get combos off of it. It is one of her most important uh, hit confirmable combo starters. Back one is an 11 frame mid. You don't need to know what that means other than to know that if you want to get in and rush someone down, that's the move you do for it, right? If you want to play up close, if you're fighting a zoner and they're zoning you out because Frost can zone, but she's not good at it compared to a full-on zoner, you want to get in and rush them down, back one is going to be your go-to. Anytime you get in close, chances are you probably want to do back one. All right, next most important move is going to be back two, right? This thing right here. This is just a stupid good long range poke. And on block or on hit, you can do that, right? You can get combos off it. She does have a full string, right? She has a back, uh, back two, two. That move is flawless blockable, so be careful. And then she's got back two, two, one, two, right? Ends in an overhead. That thing is death on block. So generally speaking, you want to be very, very careful about when you use uh, the follow-ups to back two. Uh, generally speaking, just back two on its own as a good, like, I'm over here, I'm going to hit you from this range, and you have to respect it. And you know what, maybe I'll throw out a drill in case I want to get a combo off of it, right? Back two, very important for controlling the mid-range. Next most important controlling the mid-range move is down four. This move is stupid, very stupid. If Frost gets you in the corner, this move is absolute hell, right? Down four, and then she can down four into helicopter and just lock you down. This move is very, very good for controlling mid-range space and just kind of enforcing your will on them. If they're trying to move in, you down four, stops them. They're trying to shimmy you, right? They do a stagger and they're trying to shimmy. You could chase them down with down four. Get right back in there, right? It gives you nice, decent frame advantage so you can get back into range, right? So if you look, right, I hit down four at max range, dash forward, and I'm now in back two range. That's, that's the power of the down four, all right? Next most important move, forward two. It's a high, it's a good combo ender, it gives you a decent knockdown. Um, you want to be very careful about throwing it out raw in the neutral because it is a high. If they read it, they're going to uppercut you. But as a move for chasing someone down, right, if you're outspacing them and controlling them in the mid range, so they decide I'm going to back up and zone, this is a very good move for chasing down. This is also a very good move to do for whiff punishing. If they just start throwing out buttons, right, they're in the mid range and they're doing this shit, trying to fuck with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? You're going to lay on the ground is what you're going to do. Quit pushing buttons in the mid range. Quit whiffing in the nooch, right? Forward two is a very, very strong whiff punish. It's only a button and a direction, so you can easily throw that out. If they throw a move out and uh, it whiffed, you can easily react to that and just throw this out. And as long as they didn't neutral duck, you're safe. All right? So keep forward two in mind to chase people and to whiff punish. 
Next important move is going to be down three, right? So this move looks very, very awkward, and it's a crouching normal. So the, the usages you would think for down three are not its best usages. Down three is actually like one of the best anti-airs in the game. Like this move just stops jumps, right? If he doesn't jump in, I can hit that and get a full combo, right? Just hold on, jump in, right? It hits people out of the air. And you can get a full combo off of it. It's just like, even if he crosses up, right? Even on a cross up, he can catch it if I do it, if I time it right. Let me do, let me do, uh, let me get in closer, right? You can catch him on a cross up. It's got decent range. Look at that. Like, it hits where my freaking head is. Like, what is this? Like, this thing just stops people from jumping in. Down three, godlike anti-air. I don't know why it works, but it does. <coughs> Oi, now I'm coughing. All right, next most important move is going to be one, three, two, right? So one, three is your general jab string. But one, three, two ends in a mid, and it's a mid that's plus on block, right? So one, three, two is plus three on block. It allows you to set up, like, a lot of Frost's moves are quite slow. She has fast moves, but she has a lot of slow moves. So anytime you can get block advantage plus frames, you want to look for those because it allows you to get your slower moves out on screen without getting interrupted. And uh, if you look at the block off of this move, right? So we'll set him to block everything, right? So one, three, two, he blocks it back and he's right in back two range, right? You can even go for back one. Like if you think that they're gonna stick a button out, you can preemptively throw out a back one. It'll whiff at that range, but if they stuck out a button, you're gonna interrupt them because you're at plus frames and their button's gonna extend their hitbox and you'll be able to get uh, a counter hit, right? So you wanna use whatever few plus frames that you have, whatever block advantage you have, which leads us into our next string, which is two, two, right? And that move is like super plus, right? So that move gives you a block advantage of plus five, which is actually a lot. In this game, plus frames are usually like plus one, plus two, plus three. So when you can get plus five, that's very, very strong, right? So you can hit this, and that puts you right at that range, right? This is almost guaranteed. So at plus five, it makes her back one, an 11 frame mid, start up in six frames. So now you have a six frame advancing mid. There's very few things that are going to interrupt it. So this is a very, very strong, strong frame trap, especially off of a jail, right? So if you hit it down one and you jail them, you could down one, jail them into that, and then go right into your other shit, right? Very, very strong tactic uh, for Frost. There's not a lot of opportunities for her to get plus frames, so keep in mind the opportunities that you do have for plus frames. And 2-2 two, two is not a bad combo starter, right? Like, so if I land that, I can easily just go right into my normal combo. Uh, so it's a very good, strong utility move for Frost, and that's kind of the, th the theme with Frost, is that she just has utility. She has stuff that just works for a lot of situations, and then she has very, very specific moves for very, very specific situations. Now, what situation do you want to find yourself in? The optimal range for Frost is probably range three, which is one backdash at the start of the match. This is generally where you want to be. It's easy to whip punish with the forward two. Uh, you can control space with that. You can kind of keep them out with that. And if you want to move in, you can move in from that range. Really, honestly, Frost doesn't have a bad range. In my opinion, Frost has a bad range per matchup. She's not good up close against a character like Jackie, but she can fight long range against Jackie. She's not good long range against a character like Robocop or Shang Tsung, but she can get in on those characters and she's better up close than them. So as a general rule, if you don't know what to do, start at range three, feel out your opponent of what they wanna do and then go from there. If you know where your opponent is weak, then you can just move into whatever range they're weak at. That's the, the core to Frost, is that like there's very little autopiloting with her. You have to kind of be a very fluid, very uh, improvisational player to make her work. Now, there's also a lot of uh, set play, unblockables, gimmicks, and bullshit with this character, um, but a lot of that is higher level stuff. So I'll, we're not going to cover that too much, but if you want us to get a, a little bit more in-depth with the character, you can always come and hit us up at our community on Twitch. 
uh, .tv slash SoCal Honey Badger. You can hit us up on our Discord. We have a lot of wonderful Frost players within our community that can show you the really cheap shit and really make this character shine. But for a beginner, just learning the character, start with this and then build your pyramid up there. Use this as your base. And then uh, this is this will get you good. This will get you understanding her and going into combat league and teabagging people like the best of them. Either way, thank you for watching this video. Now fuck right on off.